Today, we're making one of my favorites, gingerbread cookies. They're so delicious. They're warm, they're spicy, with a hint of sweet. Let's get started. We start by using two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour and mixing that with our seasoning mix. So in here we have cinnamon, uh, ground ginger, ground cloves, and salt. And I'll have the quantities in the description below. Make sure to get that well blended. Then we're going to mix one teaspoon of baking soda. And then we'll set this aside. Using a stand mixer with a mixing paddle, we're going to combine one stick of butter. It's about half cup of butter that has been left out at room temperature. Two third cup brown sugar. And we'll whip that together until it's nice and soft. Once you have divided your dough into two equal pieces, now it's time to chill them in the fridge for up to two hours. You could go as long as 12 hours if you wanted to, but I like going for two hours because I just can't wait to eat these. When chilling the dough, I love to use beeswax wraps because there's zero waste involved. It's just a beeswax wrap, no plastic, a win-win for everybody. There you go, these are off to the fridge for two hours. Okay, it's been two hours. It's time to roll our cookies out, shape them, and bake them. So what we'll wanna do now is preheat our oven to 350 degrees while we roll out our dough. and cold so we're just going to flatten it out with a rolling pin now I like to use a rolling pin that is all one piece because um, what I found is when you have a roller plus handles it tends to make everything uneven um, so I just like having one piece and you can really feel um, how thick or thin your dough is
Now that we have it rolled out, it's time to cut the dough. And if you have cute cookie cutters, you could use those. I just have round ones. I like round cookies, so I'm using that. Now we weren't able to make all of the dough into shapes, so this is where the fun part comes. You can re-knead it together, re-roll it out, and make some more cookies. But there we've got some nice little rounds. I like to use cast iron, so I'll be using uh, cast iron for these, but you could definitely use a cookie sheet or whatever um, pan you have. All right, we'll knead this back into a dough and roll it out again for some more cookies. Right now that we have all of our shapes cut out, we're gonna put them on our pan. So I'm using a cast iron pizza stone. Um, you can definitely use any type of cookie sheet that you have on hand. If you do have cast iron, I highly recommend it. Cooking on cast iron is amazing. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add all of our cookies to the pan. All right, we're gonna put these into the oven at 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes um, until they start looking a little bit crispy. Now, the middles will still be a little bit gooey, but that's okay. We will bring them out and let them uh, cook the rest of the way out of the oven. Our cookies are done, they're out of the oven. I cook them for about 10 minutes and then let them rest outside of the oven for about five minutes before I put them on a cooling rack. And that really helps them uh, not to get too crunchy inside the oven and get burnt, um, but then it allows them to uh, keep some moisture as well. I decided to run a little experiment while baking these cookies. So my first batch of cookies, this was on a cold cast iron pan. And as you can see, they are really nice cookies. They are uh, nice and thin. They have a little bit of give to them. The edges are crunchy, but the middle is still nice and gooey. So these are really, really good. Then I put a batch of cookies on a regular uh, baking sheet, and this is how they turned out. Same time, um, same thickness, everything exactly the same, just on a different uh, type of material. So this was just a plain old steel uh, cookie sheet, and you can tell they are really <laughs> crispy. Um, slightly burned if I might say, but they are really, really crunchy. Our third batch was cooked on the cast iron that was completely hot. Um, and these turned out a little bit different than the ones uh, that were on a cold cast iron were. I would say these initially, they were a little bit more uh, soft coming out of the oven. I thought they would probably stay really really moist um, But they've hardened up a little bit. So that's interesting to see now. They're not as crunchy as the uh, sheet pan ones But they are they're decently crunchy. They're not burnt though So I think that's a really important uh, thing to note that they are a little bit crunchier, but they're they're not burnt um, and then I was decided I wanted to continue to cook on the cast iron because I like the result that I got from those better. So this is a fourth batch that I did on the same cast iron that had been through the oven a couple of times. Um, and these came out really, really nice. These are completely cooled now and they are still really, really, really soft. So around the edges are super crispy. And in the middle, you can see they are just really soft. So these are really good. I think it pays to warm up the cast iron um, before you're going to start baking your cookies. That really helps them uh, cook very evenly. The edges got a nice crunch, but the middle is still nice and gooey. Also, when baking cookies, it is always important to put them in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes, depending on the thickness and the type of cookie that you're baking, and then letting them sit on the hot pan for about five minutes outside of the oven, because then they really set, they get crispy without getting burnt, 
and it makes a delicious cookie every single time. So I'm really excited about the fourth batch. I think these are my favorite, they're really good. Um, but it was just an interesting experiment to see how the cookies interact differently with the different uh, baking sheets. I think the steel baking sheet, um, the regular old baking sheet that you can find everywhere, I think that that just heats up a little too fast and so that caused the cookies to burn a little bit more and they were in for the exact same amount of time, they were the same thickness, everything was exactly the same. Um, but the material is thinner um, and I think that it just was too much for it. The cast iron pan it was just so much better to cook with. I just love cooking on cast iron. I think that it does so much better with really any kind of food that you're cooking. I think maybe part of the reason why these cookies that were on the regular baking sheet did come out a little bit more burnt is because they were on the uh, regular steel pan cooling. Um, and I think the temperature changes, it didn't allow it to keep the moisture in to keep it soft. Um, I think it cooled down a little bit too fast and that's probably what caused it to dry out a little bit and get really crunchy. Um, but whereas the cast iron, it stays hot. So you're going to continue to keep that moisture in because it's on a hot surface. Uh, and then once you get them off of there, they have already retained the moisture that they need to stay nice and pliable and soft. Let's do a sound test for these cookies because it's hard to know exactly on camera uh, what I'm talking about when it comes to these cookies um, being different. So this was the first batch on the cold cast iron. You can see it sounds kind of soft. It sounds a little like there's some moisture to it. And then if we break it apart, nice, nice and soft. Very good. This one is, honestly, this one is thinner than most of the other ones and it's still pretty soft and, and uh, gooey. So good job on the cast iron, even though it was cold. This is the cookie that was on the baking sheet. <laughs> you can tell it sounds like I'm uh, clanging two stones together. It is hard, um, a little bit burnt. And let's break it apart. So that one had quite the snap. You can tell it is pretty dry on the inside. There's really no moisture retained at all. Um, so that's okay. We could repurpose these to make a sort of a graham cracker crust for a cheesecake, or you could eat them as, as they are. It is still good, but it is very, very crunchy. It does taste slightly burnt. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but it'll do in a pinch. This is the third batch. So this was on the hot cast iron. Um, it's second time around. Sounds a little bit crunchier. I'm not quite as crunchy as the one that was on the sheet pan though. <laughs> that one was really crunchy. But this one has a little bit of a crunch to it. Not too bad though. Um, let's test and see if it snaps. So there was a little bit of a snap on that one. Um, it's still pretty moist on the inside though. If I pinch the dough together, it does come together. Um, unlike the sheet pan one, there's no pushing it together. Um, so this one is pretty good. So that one has a crunch. Um, it is a little bit more snappy. And now we have our fourth, uh, fourth batch, but our third on our hot cast iron. Sounds like there's a lot of moisture in there. It sounds really, really good. No crunch whatsoever. And then if we try to pinch the edges, they do come together really easily. Mm. That is definitely the best one uh, out of all of these. It is very moist. There's a bit of 
bit of a crunch, um, but overall it's really chewy, really delicious. Um, this one is definitely the best. So this one was the cast iron that was already hot. It already had been through a couple uh, oven cycles with the cookies. And so it was really, really nice and hot. There you go. There's our experiment. There's our cookies. I highly recommend this recipe to anyone who loves gingerbread cookies. They're really, really easy to make um, and they are delicious. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.